Hi, I'm Dan Bauer. This is CBA Office Hours. It's a series where Patrick Kern and I talk about frequently asked questions uh, in statistical analyses in the behavioral health and social sciences. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is a question that we get from researchers who are interested in subgrouping their data or identifying segments within the population at hand. Uh, and that is, what's the difference between finite mixture models and more traditional cluster analysis algorithms? Um, finite mixture models have been gaining in popularity. We're seeing more and more applications. And people want to know, you know, what are the advantages of that approach versus the sort of tried and true, more traditional clustering techniques that we've seen in the past? So what I'm going to do today is contrast the k-means clustering algorithm, which is sort of the workhorse of cluster analysis, the most commonly used algorithm, to a finite mixture model, just to give a sense of how these techniques are different. Uh, and I'm really only going to scratch the surface. Cluster analysis is a huge topic. There are lots and lots of different kinds of algorithms, and there are lots of complexity with finite mixture models as well. In fact, we have an entire five-day workshop dedicated to these topics. So we're really just going to begin thinking about these models and get an orientation to how they differ from one another. So I'm going to do that within the context of a hypothetical example. I'm going to presume that we've, we've sampled data on a set of adolescent males, and we're looking at popularity and aggression and whether there might be subsets of individuals characterized by different patterns on these two variables. And so we've got popularity, we've got aggression, and across our sample, we observe a variety of different uh, values, right? And so we can plot out those observed data points, and we would get some kind of a, a scatter plot that might look something like that, right? Uh, now, what a k-means algorithm and other similar kinds of cluster analysis algorithms are going to do is they're going to put a partition on this, uh, this bivariate space. Right, so what k-means is going to do is try to identify the optimal partition where what is optimal in k-means is a partition that minimizes the squared deviations within a given cluster. And so here we might get partitions that would look something like, you know, maybe something like that, uh, where we've got three clusters. And those clusters, uh, you know, we would have cluster one over here that would be characterized by high popularity and low aggression. We would have cluster two over here that's characterized by high aggression and low popularity. And we've got a relatively smaller cluster three up here of boys who have both high popularity and high aggression. Now, um, how is k-means coming up with these clusters? Well, it's trying to identify the clusters where the centroid of the cluster, right? And so those, those centroids are the cluster means on the two variables. So where the centroids of those clusters are chosen such that the deviations of the individual scores within a given cluster have the smallest squared errors or squared discrepancies from the centroid as possible. Right? So we want all of those discrepancies, all that variability within a cluster, we want that to be as small as it can possibly be. So k-means cluster analysis is optimizing the criterion of minimizing the sums of square deviations within a cluster. And in so doing, it's also maximizing the differences between the clusters. So k-means is nice in the sense that it yields distinct, as distinct as possible clusters that are compact and homogeneous uh, unto themselves. Right? So each cluster is a fairly compact set of uh, data points. So k-means is doing this kind of partitioning of the data based on an algorithm. Now, how finite mixture models differ from this, is I'm just gonna redraw our scatter plot. How finite mixture models differ from this is they aren't producing a partition necessarily of the data space. Uh, instead, what we're doing is fitting a statistical model uh, and we're trying to optimize the fit between that model and the observed data. Uh, so again, I'm just gonna draw up a few points of data here. And hopefully it'll look kinda like the data that we saw just a moment ago. Um, so again, we've got our set of data that has some bivariate distribution associated with it in the overall population. And in the finite mixture model, what we do is we posit that underlying the total set of data that we've observed is a mixture of underlying subgroups. And within each subgroup, we have a distribution of a, of a particular type. 
And so a common type of finite mixture model is a normal mixture model, where we assume that there's a normal distribution within each subgroup. And so if we, if we make that assumption of bivariate normality between population and regression within each subgroup, we can then fit that model to the data and try to estimate the parameters. Right? So a normal distribution is characterized by means, variances, and, and correlations or covariances. So those are the parameters we're trying to estimate in addition to the prevalence rates of these, these clusters. So we have a formal statistical model. We fit that model to the data and we obtain our solution. And so I'm gonna just draw on a possible solution for this particular set of data. Um, and so here again, I've drawn on sort of three clusters and those clusters loosely look like the clusters we obtained from k-means. Um, although they don't have to, the finite mixture model may generate a very different looking set of clusters than what you would obtain from a k-means. But just to keep things simple here, I've drawn them to look very similar. Now, each one of these ellipses represents a particular cluster, or sometimes they're referred to as component distributions or latent classes. But each ellipse represents a subgroup and represents the bivariate normal distribution that pertains within that particular subgroup. Now, when we fit the model to the data, we're going to obtain estimates of the means, variances, and covariances within each one of these subgroups, as well as their prevalence rates. And unlike in a k-means approach, because this is a statistical model and we're estimating population parameters, we can also make inferences. So we obtain standard errors and can do all the same kinds of inference tests that you're used to with any statistical model. So that's one big difference, is we're estimating population parameters. Another difference is notice there's no hard partition here. And in fact, the clusters can overlap considerably, right? So here the clusters aren't overlapping very much, but you see between these two clusters, there's particularly a region of overlap. Individuals whose scores on popular integrations who fall within those overlapping regions, those are individuals for which we can't assign with much certainty whether they belong to this class or this class. Right? So it's a probabilistic clustering. We're not going to give people, um, we're not going to assign people to one and only one cluster with a finite mixture model. Instead, every individual obtains probabilities of belonging to each class. Now, some individuals are going to have very high probabilities of belonging in a specific class. So these data points, you see that the cluster is very well separated from these clusters. And so anyone with data points up here is probably going to have a near perfect probability of belonging into that high aggression, high popularity cluster. But people over here are going to have a lot more uncertainty. We're not sure if they fall in the high popularity, low aggression cluster, or they fall in the higher aggression, lower popularity cluster. All right, so those are a couple of differences. Formal statistical model from which we can make inferences and overlapping clusters, so sort of a fuzzy clustering as opposed to a hard clustering. Another important difference is because it does involve a formal statistical model, the finite mixture modeling framework can incorporate lots of models that we're already familiar with. So here I've simply just looked at overall distributions, bivariate distributions with means and variances and correlations. But you can do other kinds of models that apply various sorts of structures to the data. So we can do finite mixture regression models, for instance, to see whether or not a set of covariates relates to an outcome or a set of outcomes in different ways across subpopulations. So for instance, is a treatment program differentially effective for individuals in one subgroup versus another within the population? We can do finite mixture growth models. They're also referred to as growth mixture models. Uh, to try to see whether or not in longitudinal data we see subsets of individuals who follow distinctly different developmental trajectories over time. We can do finite mixture structure equation models, for instance, if we wanted to see whether or not mediating mechanisms differ across subsets or subpopulations uh, in our, our, uh, our population of interest. Uh, we can do finite mixture survival analysis, so looking at whether or not the relative ordering uh, and likelihood of event occurrence differs across uh, segments of the population. So really any statistical model that you're familiar with, we can bring into this finite mixture framework to examine whether or not there's heterogeneity across groups there. So again, there's lots of complexity here that we haven't touched on, um, but the finite mixture model has some real advantages relative to traditional cluster analysis. Now, the k-means algorithm still has its purposes. In fact, if your goal is simply to obtain compact clusters, 
and assign people to those clusters, well, k-means is going to do that very well. That's the criteria that it's trying to optimize. Whereas a finite mission model is not trying to optimize the classification per se, it's trying to optimize the fit of the model to the data. And those classes might be overlapping considerably in uh, obtaining that optimal fit, so it might not give you as clean of a classification. So k-means still has its purpose, but there are certainly a number of important advantages of the finite mixture framework as well. So hopefully that gives you a sense of the, the types of techniques that are available and, and when you might prefer one versus another. Thanks very much for your time.